Just cut it on.
about now. See? All right. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Do we got it? I think I got it. Well, I'll tell you what. All right. Here I am trying to be cool with it. And I, I think I got it caught in my jacket. Let's see. There it is. Is that it? All right. Can y'all hear me? Is that good? Good? Yes, sir. We ready. All right. God bless you all and uh, grateful to the good Lord for, for being here today. And uh, I want to just take a quick moment and uh, give deference to Dr. Miller. And uh, thank you for allowing me to be here as our president. And uh, and then I got to thank the Lord so much for Dr. Blakemore and uh, just the relationship, uh, mentorship, uh, friendship, and uh, just admiration through the years. So I want to thank you. I always say it to him privately and personally, but uh, never have had opportunity to see it publicly in a setting like this. And then again, Dr. Friedman, Dr. Lostover, all of you um, have been a blessing to me and um, uh, especially as uh, Dr. Lostorfer said, way back from Wesley College. So, and I and I and I, I will say I am young. I'm 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 49, getting ready to be 50. Uh, just for me and does the body good. So I know, Amen. I know I may not look all the way my age, but I have been around with Wesley for some time. But I thank God so much for you all. Mark chapter nine, and uh, bring you. Greetings again, as uh, Dr. Blakemore said, Cherry Grove Baptist Church uh, by way of Jackson, Mississippi, down in the area called Georgetown, over by Lanier High School, if you're kind of familiar with the inner city in that area, not, not far from UMC. And um, we've been there now going into 19 years as under shepherd at Cherry Grove, amen. And uh, so we're grateful to God and thank you all again for having me. Mark chapter nine, I want to read a few verses here, uh, commencing at verse number 14. Mark chapter nine, commencing at verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, running to him, saluted him. Verse 16, and he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? What are you questioning my disciples about? 17, and one of, one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit, and wheresoever... He taketh him, he teareth him, he foameth, he gnashes with his teeth, pineth away. I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and saith unto, saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? He says, bring him unto me. Skip, if you will, to verse 25, and I'll conclude there. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Jesus said to the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you to come out of him. And the spirit came out. I want to preach and try to teach just for a moment about the church is still necessary. The church is still necessary. Uh, out of all the things that the Lord has created, in my opinion, the church is one of the greatest things. Uh, the Lord created photosynthesis, snatched sunlight out the sky, water, H2O, carbon 
dioxide, CO2, mixed it together, made glucose, C6, H12, O6, plus oxygen, O2, just to give us air to breathe and food to eat. Still doesn't compare, in my opinion, to the church. Uh, the Lord created the positive charge of a proton, negative charge of an electron, the neutral charge of a neutron, and made an atom. Used an atom to help make a cell. Took a cell, made a tissue. Took tissue, made an organ. Took an organ, made an organ system. Took an organ system, made a man. Took a man, made a woe man. <laughs> took the man and the woe man and made all children. Amen. Still, in my opinion, doesn't come to compare to the church. The church is one of the greatest things that the Lord created. The word church, you know, the Greek word, Ekklesia, E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A, Epsilon, Kappa, Kappa, Lambda, Eta, Sigma, Iota, Alpha. Uh, the Ekklesia, which means that the church is not only a building, but it's a body of born again, blood bought, baptized believers that accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, which means those of us that are Christians, technically, we are the church. Uh, a storm come by, it can blow the building down. But as John Wesley have taught us, you have band meetings and so forth. We can always congregate together and still have church. Uh, ecclesia, we know the prefix ek means out. The root word kaleo meaning called. We've been called out of the world to be brought back into the world that we may be light and salt for the world. The church is still necessary. Uh, and when you look at this particular story, there's a father that has a problem. And his problem is his son was sick. Uh, he had a dumb spirit. You can say he had a demon. And notice the father brought his son to the church. When you look at it, he brought him to Jesus, but Jesus was unavailable. <laughs> a few verses earlier, Jesus is up on the mountain of transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. But he does bring him to Jesus. He's not available. So he does the next best thing is that he brings his son to Jesus' disciples. And the disciples in this context can symbolize the church because they are born again believers in Jesus the Christ. Uh, it paints this picture that there are some things that will happen in this life that nobody can handle but God. Uh, if, if you notice, the father did not bring his son to the guidance counselor at the school. He did not bring his son to the family therapist. He didn't bring his son to his primary health care physician at UMC. The Bible said he brought him to the disciples that symbolized the church. He really wanted to bring him to Christ. I'm trying to paint the picture. There are some things. My mama said, just keep on living. <laughs> that are happening in life that can't nobody handle but God. I want to ask a question. Anybody here ever been there before? Maybe some of you there right now facing. I've heard the prayer Request sound like all of us came on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. Everybody got some problems, some challenges that if we could handle it, we would have handled it. But apparently there are some things that only God can handle. Uh, anybody ever had a sick child before? A sick mother, sick daddy, a sick husband, wife, brother, sister, a sick son or a sick daughter, you can feel and see this father's plight. His baby was sick. 
His baby had something that Tylenol couldn't help with. Surgery can't fix this one. Talk to me, y'all. Uh, chemo and radiation can't handle this one. But this was something that only God could do. He brought him to the church. The question is, why? <laughs> when you look at the book of Mark, I'm preaching through the book of Mark in a series at the church. Mark presents Jesus as a servant leader. Jesus leads by serving. And, and he's been serving his disciples, uh, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, the Jews, the Gentiles, every and anybody by way of his miracles. You read through the book of Mark, he's constantly performing miracles. Simeon in the Greek signs to show that he is God in the flesh. And that if you put your faith in him, he can not only change it, but he can save you. He brought him, I believe, to Jesus because apparently, I believe, somewhere he heard and saw what the Lord had done for others. I believe a light bulb went off in his head that said, if Jesus can do it for them, then surely I know he can do it for me. I really believe that he heard what happened in Mark chapter 1 when Peter's mother-in-law was sick, getting ready to die, and Jesus healed her. I believe he probably heard what happened or even may saw what happened in Mark chapter 2 when there was this paralyzed man who had four friends uh, that loved him enough that said, not only do we want to be blessed, but we want to see our friend get blessed. And they carried him to Jesus and the house was packed. Y'all know the story, right? And they couldn't get in the front door, so they went on top of the roof, tore the roof off, let him down to Jesus. I believe he probably heard or saw what happened in Mark 3 with the man that had a withered hand but kept coming to church. And one day Jesus showed up at the church and healed his hand. I believe he may have heard or saw or for sure heard about what happened to those disciples in Mark 4 on that angry sea of Galilee. When the storm was raging, they thought they was getting ready to die. And they said, Jesus, do you even care? Anybody ever felt like that before? Anybody ever cried those tears in your prayers? Lord, do you even care? First of all, Lord, do you even see what I'm going through? And Jesus got up and spoke to the storm. Said, see, April, your femur, which means peace be still. And the storm had to sit down and be quiet. I believe they, he may have heard or even saw in Mark 5 there was this man living in the graveyard full of demons. And when he met Jesus, he met Jesus with demons but left Jesus delivered. In Mark 5, there was this woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. But when she touched the hem on the hem, what she dealt with for 12 years got healed in less than 12 seconds. I believe in Mark 5, maybe he also heard about this story about Jairus and his daughter who was sick to the point of death. Matter of fact, she died. But when Jesus showed up, took her by the hand and said, Talitha kumai, which means damsel arise and a dead girl had to stop being dead and had to become alive all over again. I believe he, he brought his son to Jesus with this in mind that if God can do it for others, I just believe if I put my faith in him, he's yet able to do it for me. I want to encourage you today, my brothers and my sisters, the church is still necessary. The Lord is still good. He's still got power. No matter what you may be facing or fighting in your life, keep your faith in God. Because we serve a God that can do anything but fail. Well, there's a problem in the text. I'm just about finished, Dr. Freeman. The problem is, I've mentioned it before, Dr. Blakemore, that he brought his son that's sick with a demon. He brought him to Jesus, but Jesus was unavailable. He was up on the mountain of transfiguration with Peter, James, and John on his way back. 
Lord help me. And he left some disciples there on duty. Here's another reason why I think and I believe with all of my heart that the church is still necessary. It's because the truth is Jesus in the flesh is not here. We got the Holy Ghost. Come on, y'all. And he live on the inside. So, yes, Jesus is here by way of the Holy Spirit in us, but not in the flesh. But you do know he is on his way back. But in the meantime, he's left some disciples. In other words, you and I are the disciples. You and I are the church. And he's left us on duty. Because there are some people in our world that got problems. People need help. Come on, y'all. People got challenges and conflict. He left us on duty that we can help those that need some help. Now, if I was at Cherry Grove, I would tell you, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get on duty. <laughs> the church is still necessary. We need the church today, you all. Uh, the church, we have to be the spiritual compass for our country and our citizenry. We just had an election Tuesday. And America has spoken loud and clear as to who as a whole America wants to be our leader. Irregardless of character, competency, class, irregardless of anything, the country has spoken that this is who we want to be our leader. We have to pray for our president, pray for his cabinet. We are all citizens of this great country. Regardless of who we voted for, agree, disagree, like or not like, whatever it may B, the Bible talks about that the Lord has the heart of every leader. We pray for our leader. We pray for his cabinet, that he have a heart and an ear sensitive to the voice of God because he's the leader in the earthly realm over God's people here in the United States. We have to remember that no matter who the president of the United States, stays is they're not the pastor of the United States and that the United States as a country is not the church that's why God called us we are the church and we have to still tell a dying world that there's a bomb in Gilead we still have to let a dying world know that Jesus is a bridge over troubled waters that he still is a way out of no way that he still is a leaning pole in the time of trouble that he still is bread in the starving land and water in dry places and a friend that will stick closer than a brother. We still have to tell the world Amen. that he died one Friday, yes. but right early Sunday morning, he yet got up with all power. In heaven and in earth. I only got one point. I promise I'm going to stop right here. I believe the church is still necessary. If I can just give this one point. Because in this life, we all will run into some stuff that we can't handle, but God can. Lord, help me. The text says this, the father had a son. His son is sick. He has a devil, a demon, a dumb spirit. Whatever terminology you want to use, he was in trouble. He brought him to Jesus because he had a problem that only God can solve. I submit and surmise to us, we still live in a time today where people got problems that only the Lord can solve. Some things we run into 
Family can't help us. Finances can't pay for this. Friends don't have the answer. Money can't do it. Master degree can't do it. The connection down at the office can't do it. It's some things that only God can do. I'm going to cut across the field. So he brings his son to Jesus. Jesus by now have come down from Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus understands what's happening. And Jesus says something. He said, I tell you what, bring him to me. The word bring there uh, in, in, in the Greek is forete. P-H-E-R-E-T-E, phi, eta, phi, epsilon, rho, epsilon, tau, epsilon, ferrete, from pharaoh in the Greek, which simply means this in a nutshell, give it to me so I can handle it. <laughs> Lord, help me. I don't know, there may be somebody's word today that whatever you're facing or fighting at your house or at your home or in your health, or in your head, or in your hands, the Lord is saying, here's what you do, give it to me. Let me handle it. Uh, it's written in the active voice and the imperative move. We know active voice means the subject got the power to do it, and the imperative mood is not a choice, it's a command. Yeah. Jesus said, let, 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 let me help you, let, let the church, let, let me help you, give it to me. Let let me handle what you're dealing with. He said, bring him to me. And then Jesus, in my opinion, Dr. Blakemore performed an exorcism. I know you're saying, where well, you see that in the, in the walker? Well, you know, it was a different exorcism than what we know of in our modern day culture. <laughs> I remember growing up looking at poltergeists when I was a little boy. Scared me half to death. Still scared me right now. I'm demons and devils. Come on. When I, when I come, on, come home, I, I got to turn the TV off. I don't want them. They may call me into the light. Amen, somebody. Uh, he performed the exorcism. Uh, different than our culture. He didn't have a healing service. And lined everybody up. And put oil on them. And declared, declared and decreed over their life. He did not line everybody up and breathe and his breath on them and knock everybody down. Uh, you do know God is not in the business of knocking us down. He's really trying to lift us up. Uh, he performed an exorcism different than our culture. He spoke a word. Verse 25, he said, it says, Jesus saying, S-A-Y-I-N-G, say, he said, he said to the deaf and dumb spirit, come out of him. And the dead spirit, the devil, the devil, the demon spirit had to come out because there's power in his word. Jesus, Jesus said, the word said, lego in the Greek, it, it, it basically means in this context a command because he's the commander in chief. And I'm done when I tell you this. This is why I believe, brothers and sisters, the church is still necessary. Is because we got the word. Amen. What the world is looking for today is the word. Even if the world don't know it, it's looking for the word. Dr. Blakemore share with you, I got three children. My oldest baby is in Manhattan working and my two small babies are still at the house, nine and six years old, and, and they need stuff that they don't know they need. <laughs> so we had to make them eat the vegetables. Come on, somebody. <laughs> had, to, had to make them drink water because we know they need what they don't know they need. I think I ought to tell you, our world today need the word, <laughs> even though it doesn't know that it need the word, because there's power in the word. The church is still necessary because we have the word. 
Psalm 121, David said, I've learned to lift up mine eyes to the hills. And then the question comes, whence cometh my help? He said, my help, it come from the Lord. Psalm 37, 25, he said, I've been young. Right now, I'm old. But I've never seen. In other words, he said, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen people die. I've seen couples go through divorce. I've even seen people have diabetes. I've seen people have surgery. I've seen people get sick. But he said, one thing I've never seen, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed begging for bread. We need the church today, y'all. Psalm number 30, verse 5, he said, weeping me. Endure for a night, but joy, it will come in the morning. He brought his son to Jesus. Jesus delivered the boy, changed his life forever. That's what Calvary has done for us. That's what the world needs to know about what the church stands for. It doesn't matter the ethnicity, the denomination, the, the key is that Christ is the sinner, that he's a risen Savior, that he died on a rugged cross for your sin and mine. But the old pastor said, you can't leave him dead. <laughs> said, you got to get him up. He said, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power both in heaven and in the earth, to do anything but fail. God bless you. Stay encouraged. Keep on preaching. Keep on teaching. Keep on discipling. Keep on evangelizing. Most of all, keep on loving. The church is still necessary. Amen. Amen. God bless you.